Hello, my name is George Edmonds here from MotionVFX.com. Today we're going to be looking at M-Tracker 3D. I'm going to show you how to do this. Well, not this, not the, not the drum part, but all the text and the lightning and all that cool stuff. So, all right, let's get started. Okay, again, my name is George Edmondson with MotionVFX.com. So what I want to show you is how we created our intro for this video. Now you can see that I have my clip in my timeline here, and I have already applied M Film Look, which is also from MotionVFX. And we are doing this so that we can go ahead and get a little bit of a base grade. I'm gonna turn this off so you can see what our original looked like. So we're getting a bit of a base grade, but more importantly, we are adding contrast. M-Tracker 3D works best with high contrast videos. Now, what we do a lot of times is we'll go in and we will add contrast to our clip, track it, and then take the contrast off. So I'm gonna go ahead and scrub through because I know the only parts of my clip need to actually be tracked, which is gonna be our beginning here all the way until we get about to this section because at this point we have passed the text. So we are going to tap B and make a blade cut. And then we are going to scrub through to about here and I know that this is where I want the next track to take place. Tap A to go back to our all tool and then we know that we want this clip and this clip to be tracked. Now something else that we are going to do before we track is we're going to apply a quick mask around the drums here. The reason why is because I am moving quite a lot and we don't want the tracker to take that movement into account. So let's go to our masks. We will do a quick shape mask. It doesn't have to be anything perfect. We are going to put that mask over me here on my drums. And we are going to invert this mask. So now you can see that there is a mask placed over top of me. We are going to convert these to control points. And the reason why is because we want to be able to keyframe our mask. So let's go ahead and click convert. And now we can set keyframes on those points. Let's scrub through just a bit. We will highlight all of our points, place them over top of me. Continue to move forward. Continue moving forward. And at this point, we do want to expand that out just a bit. So we're going to highlight those points and just make it a bit bigger. And there we go, quick and easy. And you can see as we're moving forward that a little bit of my head and drumsticks are getting in the way. So let's go ahead and move that just a bit like that. And there we go, quick and dirty. Does not have to be anything special, anything super duper precise. We are just trying to alleviate that movement. So now we've got our contrast, we have our mask. Let's go back over to M-Tracker 3D. We can apply M-Tracker 3D. You'll notice that we have a track the footage button here in our canvas. And of course, over in our inspector, these both do the same thing. Click one button to track your footage. Because this is pre-recorded, I'm going to go ahead and click track and I will speed that up. See you in just a minute. All right, and now that we are done tracking, we can go over and we can disable our draw mask. So the next thing that we need to do is we need to copy our track and we are going to open in our titles, the M-Tracker 3D 
we're gonna go down to particles and we're using electrical discharge to create our lightning. So let's drag that into our timeline here. By pressing command and plus, I'm going to zoom in because you can see here using our waveforms, this is where the drum hits are taking place. So as we push forward just a bit, you can see there is our first drum hit. So I'm going to bring our electrical discharge back just a bit. Now you'll notice that we have the no tracking data available, copy it from mTracker 3D effect. We've already done that, so let's go in our title to our inspector, and all we need to do now is paste our track. Okay, and you can see done, tracking data has saved successfully. Now we need to place our lightning in our scene. Now we're gonna use this by using our target icon, and you can see our 3D gizmo is placed all around the room, and it's actually even being affected by different things in our scene. Now, because this is lightning shooting from the sky, we are going to hold a shift down and you can see now that our points are oriented just straight up and down, which is what we want. And I think I want our first bit of lightning to hit right here, kind of in the center. All right. Now we need to scale our content up quite a bit. So we're going to scale this up as if it's coming from the sky. All right, that looks good. Then you can see as we come down, we have lightning thickness, and that is just, of course, going to change the thickness of our lighting. Why don't we try to make this a bit thinner because our lightning is going to get more aggressive as we go. So I think I'm gonna bring that down to about there. As we keep coming, you can see we have hue saturation, and I think that we definitely need to make some adjustments on this. We want to better match the natural ambient light in our room. So let's turn that on, and let's start making those adjustments here to our hue. And you can see we have all sorts of different colors. I think if I come back just a bit, all right, that looks a lot better. I'm going to bring my saturation down. And now that we've brought that saturation down, you can see, let's toggle that on and off, a drastic difference. It looks much more like our light here that we are going to crop out later, but that is what we are going for. So that looks fantastic. All right, let's continue to move down in our inspector. And now we can see Glint. As you can see, our glint is just kind of our light around our lightning bolt there. So honestly, on our glint, I think that I like the preset here. We've just got our exposure, glow, intensity, and mix. So let's continue to push down, and we're going to look at glint 2. And again, honestly, I think I like that. So we will continue to scroll down. And now you can see we have our shake. And basically, this is our animation that is happening during the hit of electricity. I really like that in the preset. That looks fine. So we're going to leave our shake as well. Our waviness, again, is dealing with animation. I enjoy the preset, so we're going to leave that. We have our additional glow. Now notice, just because of the way we have this set, there's a little bit of some cutoff on the glow here at the bottom, and that's okay. We're just gonna go on our Y position, bring that up just a little bit, and now you can see that that is gone. Then we have light wrap, which in this instance, we don't really need any sort of light wrap, so that's no problem. And reflection. Now, even though this floor isn't extremely reflective. I feel like we could use just a little bit of something here that helps us make that connection point. So we're gonna turn reflection on and we're just gonna make some adjustments there. And there's not a lot happening with our reflection, but you do see that it is adding a bit more on the ground. And that's really what we want. We want to give the illusion that light is being emitted so we are going to leave that 
and then we have our noise which we do not need noise in this because we don't have a noisy shot so I feel like there's something still missing and that is actual light being emitted from our lightning into the room itself so this is a really fun trick we're going to go down to our generators and we're going to go to our solids and we're going to place a custom solid over our electrical discharge i'm going to tap b for blade cut we're just going to cut that right over top a We'll select this and delete. Okay, now that we have that, I'm gonna go ahead and just scroll back up to M Tracker 3D. Now what I'm going to do, I'm going to press V to disable so that I can see our lightning because we want to match this color. Let's use our color picker and we're going to use our color picker and just select that lightning color there. I think I'm going to brighten it up just a bit. Let's tap V to re-enable. Okay, and now that we have our color selected, let's go over to our inspector here and we're going to change our blend mode to overlay. And then we need to bring our opacity down just a bit. I think that might be a bit much. Now here's the fun part. As you can see here, it looks as though light is just kind of filling the room, but we don't necessarily want to fill the entire room with light. Now I'm looking at it, I think that that color is still a bit too harsh. So I'm actually going to brighten that up and I'm gonna push a little bit more toward white here as if that is just some bright light. much better okay so i've set my view to 25 percent because the next thing we need to do is add a draw mask so let's add that and we're going to begin adding control points around our lightning now we can click and use the bezier curves when we right click and you see here we have smooth and then we can give that a little bit more rounded feeling and i think that's going to feel a bit more natural So now that we have our mask set, we're going to use feather and we are just going to feather this out pretty much the entirety of the room here. Let's use our fall off controls and let's make these controls, let's come up a bit more to the bottom of our lightning. All right, let's set it back to fit so we can kind of see what's happening here. And there you go. We have that light being emitted into the room and it is adjusting the exposure, as you can see on my hat, on our highlights. And I think that that looks a lot better. So let's check that really quickly. So I think that it'd be nice to just have that light kind of fade in really quickly since we have our electricity coming in and then going back out. I'm going to have our generator highlighted, press command T, and we will add a quick fade in and out so that it is very, very fast, just like our lightning. All right, I love it. Now, we've done all the hard work. Here's the fun part. Now all we need to do is go in and we can highlight our electrical discharge along with our mask, Command C, place it in the next position that we'd like, Command V to paste. So we are going to need to repaste our tracking data into our title because we pressed Command C and Command V earlier, we need to go back into our original clip. Let's copy our track again, 
And now when we go back into our M Tracker 3D title, we can paste that tracking data and it will be applied to this new position. You can see now done tracking data saved successfully. And why don't we select a new point? So let's hold shift down. And I don't want to go too crazy throughout the room, but why don't we just put this one over here? We can scale this up just a little bit. So it's coming in from the top. And let's go in and adjust our mask just a bit. By bringing this over there we go great and you can see that we have our first lightning hit tracked and our second lightning hit tracked and you can see here we have let's see one i'm watching my left hand one two again so i'm going to actually set a marker here by tapping m so there's our first hit, one, two, M. And let's continue to do this down the line. One, two, three. And then I kind of go a little bit crazy with the over the top drum solo okay so i'm going to back out we are going to go ahead and copy our electrical discharge here by pressing option click and drag up and we're going to set it at the beginning of each of these markers option click and drag up option click and drag up option click drag up option click drag up again and then option click and drag up and that's going to be for our final now we already have all of our information copied i think i want some of these to start to overlay each other so i'm going to drag the duration of a few of these out just so that we've got multiple bits of lightning on our screen i think that'll be a lot of fun so we need to paste the data into each of these titles. So we still have that saved. So we're just going to hit paste track on each one really quickly. Okay, so let's go back to our first now that we have saved all of that tracking data and we can begin to have a little bit of fun just by placing this lightning in different places in the room. And we will do the same. We will hold option, click and drag up and we will add our gradients onto each of our discharges. Okay, so now we get to have a little bit of fun and we are going to use our M Tracker 3D expansions. And we are going to use title number 11 for this as the text already has a very similar look to our room. So let's go ahead and drag our title number 11 in. Let's make sure that we retime it to the appropriate time. And we need to paste our tracking data into our title. Okay, and you can see that that was successful. I know in this title, I want it to just kind of hit with our lightning. So I'm going to turn our animation in and out off. And I need to, again, select a position in 3D space for our title to appear. So I want this title to be floating. So the next thing I'm going to do, I'm going to scale my title up just a bit. And we need to rotate it to be facing our camera a bit better. So let's go into our content rotation on Y and we will just make that quick adjustment there and on Z, on our Z axis. And then we need to go into our title position and we need to just bring that title position up on Y. 
and you can see our shadow there is staying on the floor and we are moving up on the y-axis now we need to do the same with our subtitle so let's go on our subtitle and make the adjustment on y as well and i think that i want that to be a centered alignment and so we are going to just move on x now we are going to delete the word blade thrower change this to creatives and we need room for our subtitle there so let's just press enter and there you have it now we have our the creatives text pushing right past that looks great so now we just want to go kind of crazy with adding our electrical discharge back into our scene over top of our text so again we're going to click option click and drag up and we can push down just a bit we see our text here we see our electrical discharge now we need to make a change to this on our content position we're going to push up on y and you will see that that begins to push up onto our text itself i think i'm going to disable this bottom one here there we go and now we are essentially creating the text itself so let's duplicate this again by clicking option click and drag up and this time we are going to rotate our content as if it is coming in from the side there we're going to push up on x to begin to move that over push up on Y to bring it up and why don't we scale that down just a bit and bring that down and again we are going to duplicate option click and drag up and we are going to essentially do the opposite so that now we're bringing it in on the left side we're going to bring that down on y bring this over on x All right, that is starting to look really good. I think some of my electricity I want to be behind my text. So why don't we grab this discharge and let's bring that down below. And then you're going to see that that lightning is going behind our text here. That looks really, really good. I'm going to work a bit more on my title now that I'm looking at it. I think that my shadow is a bit too harsh. So why don't we go down to our shadows and we're gonna soften that up on the floor there quite a bit. And bring the opacity up. And by adjusting our light, we're going to place that a little bit more below our text. I think I'm also going to adjust my light color so that it's just a little bit more in that blue hue. Now, I don't want it to be quite as much as our lightning, but close. All right, great. And the next thing we need to do is, of course, option, click, and drag our color solid. So we're going to bring this in over our discharges. And now this one, because it is huge in the room we can make a little bit bigger with our mask as we are adding in our text here that is looking really really good i'd love to add some of our electrical discharge 
going across our text as well. So again, we're going to click option, click and drag up. This is our new bit of electricity here. And let's scale that down so we can see which one we're working with. Okay, we can see that over there is coming in on the left side. So let's bring that over on X. We're going to rotate that electrical discharge here. Actually, I'd like to rotate it more left. I just want that to go across our text there. Bring that over a bit on X. Just a bit more. And up on Y. And I think that will do it for bringing in our text. Okay, and I'm not going to lie to you. I wouldn't mind just a bit more coming in on this side. So one more time. Option, click, and drag up. Make sure that's in the same position. And I believe now that we've got that set, if we just change our rotation to negative 90, it should come in from that right side now. There we go. And we can just make those positions on X and Y. All right, now that we've got that set, I noticed that my title and my custom generator are coming in a bit too early. So it's very simple to fix that. Just make sure that you still have your M-Tracker 3D data copied. And we are going to our title and we're just going to push that forward a bit in space so that that comes in right as our electricity comes in. But we do need to paste that track just to make sure that it stays in place. All right, so done. We can see that that was saved successfully. And I want to, of course, do our fade by doing Command T on our custom generator so that that light just fades in with our electricity there. So let's see how that looks by using our arrow keys to push forward. There it goes. Boom, as soon as our electricity comes in and starts going crazy, we have got our text. Fantastic. And now it is as simple as just continuing to add our discharges down the line. And let's do another one here. Let's option, click, drag over. And with this one, I just want this one to remain on our text for the duration of walking past. So we are going to drag this one all the way out with our text until we get past it. So about to right there and make sure that we paste our track. Done. And we can see that now our electricity is just kind of staying there on our text. Let's make some changes to this one. Why don't we make our reflectivity not so much. And I think that I want this scale to not be so big either. So we're just repositioning that right there over top of our text. So now it is just kind of always there over our text here. I think that we can do the same with our side text. So why don't we option click and drag up and we'll put it about right there. So here you can see I just went ahead and sped through this really quickly, but you guys understand the process at this point. I'm just adding a bit more of my solid over top of my discharges there to the left and right of my text and then making changes on my masks so that they will be 
relevant and in position of my side discharges as well as my main discharge right there on top. The next thing we will do is keyframe our mask to move out of sight with our text. So we are going to go back over to our draw mask here. And on our control points, we are going to select add keyframe. And let's just push down a bit and we will just set those keyframes. to move along with our text there until we move out of the frame itself. There we go, really cool. Now, the subtle things when working with M-Tracker 3D are what really make a big difference. So if you'll notice here, my cameraman has done a bit of a rack focus. So we did this intentionally so that we could see our text nice and clearly. But then as he moves forward, you notice that I am now in focus. Now, naturally, what would happen if this text were actually in our scene is the text would then become out of focus as I am in focus. So what we need to do here is let's go into our title and we are going to go into our inspector and as we scroll down you'll notice we have a gaussian blur so we're going to go ahead and set that to zero and we're going to turn that on and we're going to add a keyframe here where you can see that i am out of focus i'm going to go ahead and set a marker here as well because we're going to do the same thing to our lightning. But you see, I've pressed M and set a marker there. And as we push forward in space, you can see that I become in focus. We are then going to set our blur amount to 50. And watch our text. You see it blurs and we are simulating that rack focus. If you watch those keyframes there. So our text is in focus. I'm out of focus. We move forward and there it is. I'm in focus. And then for the rest of the time, we are just getting more and more out of focus on our text. So let's push forward until we can't see our text anymore. And we are going to set our blur amount to 100. Let's go back to our marker. You can see here that we placed. We're going to go to our electrical discharge and we are going to do the same thing. So let's go down in our inspector. Let's find our Gaussian blur. Before we turn it on, let's set that to zero. All right, we're gonna turn that on. We're going to set a keyframe. And we're going to push forward until I am in focus. About right here. Set that to 50. And then as we push forward, we are just going to have it blur a bit more until you can't really see that electricity. And let's set that to now 100. We will do the same for this electrical discharge here. So we are going to go down in our inspector, find our Gaussian blur, set to zero, toggle it on, add our keyframe, push forward until I'm out of focus. I'm sorry, until I'm back in focus. Set the 50. And push forward. And since we don't go all the way with this, I think it's okay to just leave that at 50. And since this electrical discharge here is happening after we are already blurred we can just go ahead and go in and set our Gaussian blur to 50 
and turn it on. Fantastic. I think that looks really, really good. I really, really love having our text and lightning in focus and then that slow push. And we just still have our lightning just setting our text on electricity there. Now you can see that our we still need to do our fade in. So let's go to, let's highlight our custom generator, command T. And now our light will fade in as our electricity hits, which we actually need to back this up. You can see that our electricity is coming in a little bit before that. So there's our electricity. And there we go. Fantastic. Okay, I really like it. So now why don't we very, very quickly do the same thing on this back end. As you remember, as we backed out, we could see that bit of text floating. And I think that I'd be okay to actually do a blade cut here. And this is where we are going to do that final bit of text. And that's it. If we wanted to continue adding electrical discharges, you know how to do it. The final thing that I would like to do is give us all a cohesive look. So I'm going to highlight everything and place it inside of a compound clip by clicking option G. And we're going to use M film look. I've already actually got a preset that I used. We're going to open our M film look presets and you can see I have my presets and I have our lightning. Let's click OK. And there you have it. Now we have this overall cohesive look that I absolutely love with our lightning strikes and everything just looking beautiful. All right, so why don't we look at that final composition again? Thank you so much for checking this tutorial out during post-production world. If you have any questions, always feel free to reach out to us over at motionvfx.com. Be sure to catch us on social media. Subscribe, like, and follow. George Edmondson, out.